on everybody, it's The Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a Chicago Bulls and Indiana Pacers game reaction. The Chicago Bulls, through determination, through a very close and very resilient Indiana Pacers team, ended up fighting back and having a good revenge win over them at the United Center. It feels good to see the Bulls back in playing basketball again. It feels good to see DeRozan and Levine and Vucevic play well. It feels good for the Chicago Bulls to continue their winning streak, which I think many people may have forgotten. We are on a two-game winning streak, and now that's extended to three. It's a big game for the Chicago Bulls and a big win for this team. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Bulls show, turn notifications on, and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls game today, your overall thoughts on the player of the game, which will be a very interesting conversation, and the win in total, because let's be honest, there's a big up in this game, and there are a bit of negatives in this game as well. I guess to start off, we won this game 113 to 105. The Indiana Pacers did have a strong second half to the game, outscoring us in both of the quarters, I think, it's maybe not the fourth quarter, but they definitely outscored us in the third quarter and in the end they did fight back in this game there were a couple times they were down by 20 or a little bit under 20 they they brought it back to single digits in the in the third quarter and the bulls were resilient and we fought in the fourth quarter it's great to see that we have a lot of plays to turn to in clutch situations but nevertheless all we could do now is be very happy with this victory for a number of reasons i'm very happy with this victory one obviously seeing the fact that lonzo ball tony bradley alfonso mckinney three players pretty much entered health and safety protocols right before this game began, which is very unfortunate for the Chicago Bulls. We've lost some depth. We lost the center that I think could have been very helpful considering we used Tyler Cook at center today. And I thought Tyler Cook was okay, but we definitely could have used the extra size in that paint. And I thought Tony Bradley was a big miss in today's game as well. Also, Lonzo Ball almost dictates the entire way that we play. There was a whole component to the game that was sorely missed today because Lonzo Ball wasn't playing, and that was the transition game, ladies and gentlemen. Very few and far between did you see the Chicago Bulls run out in transition, get some easy opportunities from fast break points, and things of that nature. Now, I think Lonzo Ball was a big loss, not only on his defensive end, which I thought was big as well. We definitely missed him defensively. We missed his shooting as well, but Mainly the transition game for me today is what we miss from Lonzo Ball. And I think we're going to see different parts of the game for different games, I should say, where we will miss Lonzo Ball. Maybe we won't miss Lonzo Ball transitionally tomorrow against the Hawks. We might miss his playmaking. We might miss his defense. We might miss his scoring. There's going to be different things with Lonzo Ball because he's so well-rounded and he's a massive loss for the Chicago Bulls. We'll talk about him in another video, ladies and gentlemen. But let's talk about the things that we did do well. I thought... In terms of the, our offense today, our offense had to carry our defense. I knew coming into this game, our defense wasn't going to be as strong as other games that we've seen. I thought our defense was okay today. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was fairly decent. But we knew coming in that our offense had to carry. And therefore, you're looking to your stars, ladies and gentlemen. You're looking to your scoring, your scoring punches. You're looking to your players that are professional shot makers. You're looking at DeMar DeRozan. You're looking at Zach Levine. You're looking at Nikola Vucevic. You're looking at players like Kobe White, you're looking at players like Io off the bench, and for the most part, our stars stepped up in very good ways today. Zach Levine, welcome back to the NBA, welcome back to the Chicago Bulls, a very strong game where you've had a couple weeks off, and look at him now, 20, 30 points in the game, unbelievably strong from Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan doing what he always does, and it's a big help, and Vucevic also had an outstanding game as well, and the stars has to show up in the absence of Lonzo Ball, in the absence of Alex Caruso because those two are really strong players for the team and they're our point guards ladies and gentlemen we put Kobe White back in that point guard position and at the end of the day that's not his natural position and you can clearly see that with the way that he plays but we do need a point guard in this system and we have to see more um, players step up in that point guard position while Lonzo and Alex Caruso were out and I thought the, the stars really carried the load today I thought the stars did a great job and in the end that led to a victory and every victory without Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso in the lineup is a very important victory no matter the circumstances no matter how great or how poorly we play we have to keep on winning games we have to keep in that race to be one of the top Eastern Conference teams in the NBA at the moment moment and this win does seal that it feels nice to beat the indiana pacers considering what they did to us last time out when we versed them lost by over 30 points in that game 
We did fairly well containing their superstars in certain parts of the game. As great as you might think Miles Turner played, he absolutely stunk up the joint from the three-point line. And we allowed him to keep shooting those threes because the, the shots in the paint weren't always there. What I did notice from Miles Turner is he went into the post against smaller defenders, which is a great sight to see for the Indiana Pacers. But he loves that three-point line a lot. And we ended up having that as our benefit for this game. I thought Vucevic guarding Sabonis for the most part was a very good matchup for Nikola Vucevic. And I thought he got the better hand out of the two players as well. So you're containing the two big men. You're containing the size of their team for the most part. And then you allow DeMar DeRozan to do his thing. You allow Zach Levine to do his thing. You get Vucevic involved. And he had so many impacts on the game as well. This is a very hard game for the Pacers to win. And they did come close. And you have to give credit to the Pacers. I will always give respect to teams that fight back in this league. They fought back in the second half. But we did narrow out the win. And I'm very proud about that. Let's look at the individual performances, ladies and gentlemen. Starting off with DeMar DeRozan that had 24 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 steals. Something that's not necessarily known for with DeMar DeRozan is that he wasn't the main guy in the fourth quarter this time around. That was Zach Levine, and we'll talk about him a little bit later. But DeMar DeRozan did get a little bit out of his zone today. He was very argumentative in this game. That's not something you always see from DeMar DeRozan. He did play with a little bit of a quicker pace. But in saying that, his shots are still so, so smart for the team. And he's always going to be a guy that you depend on in terms of scoring. It's fantastic to see DeMar DeRozan continue to do that with Zach Levine in the lineup. Again, these two complement each other so well. And these two are prolific shot takers and shot makers for the team. DeMar DeRozan made a three-pointer today just to remind people that he could still score from the three-point line. Just because he hasn't done it in a while doesn't mean it's impossible for him to do it. He got two steals as well today. Something else that I thought was fairly lacking for the Bulls was the steals nut factor having multiple steals and uh, turn that into fast break points I thought that was also big and the turnovers was fairly big as well we'll get into that a little bit later as well but with DeMar DeRozan it's calm cool collected he did end up playing with a little bit of a faster pace today but he got the job done in total and that's what a good player does and I thought he did a great job today in this game stepped up big time Kobe White eight points two rebounds one assist with one block in today's game now there are many things to get uh, to talk about with Kobe White. We might spend a few minutes talking about this. Kobe White, what I liked about his game today, I truly 100% in my heart thought he stepped up defensively tonight. And we've seen that consistently through Kobe White, whether he's a good or talented defender or not, you can clearly see the work ethic to play defense is there. And that's something that I like to see. He is the step-in point guard for tonight's game. He's not playing as a scorer for the Chicago Bulls. He only took 10 shots today, 3 from 10, 30%. Not great, but also not horrible for the Chicago Bulls. Also, he is someone that is trying to be a facilitator. And that's where Kobe White kind of struggled tonight. Because as the point guard, we are looking for someone to facilitate to Levine, to Vucevic, to DeRozan. As well as to the other players around the team as well. Like Javante Green, who had a good game. Io, Troy Brown. The list goes on. And only one assist in 33 minutes is what is not what a point guard should be doing, in my opinion. I think if Kobe White was to have a great game today, you need to boost up those assist numbers, those playmaking stats to three to four assists for the Chicago Bulls for 33 minutes played. Nevertheless, I don't think this is a bad game from Kobe White. Again, he's not going to be the main guy on this team. He's the fourth option on this uh, starting lineup, which makes perfect sense in my opinion. And at the end of the day, he is someone that we just need to see a lot of effort from. We need to see defensive intensity from, and we need to see boosted playmaking from him. The defensive energy was there. I thought some of his shot selection was outstanding. Some of it was very poor. Two step back threes that I don't think were necessary in the game. But... It's not the worst game from him, and I expect to see a lot better from him um, coming into the next game now that he is put in a different situation where he has to play the majority as a point guard. We're going to have to see a different version of Kobe White than what we've seen, and that's where we have to see his step up in the next one. Hopefully, he can do it. Nikola Vucevic had 16 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 7 from 10 from the field today, 2 from 3 from the 3-point line. 
Nikola Vucevic was outstanding today. And don't get me wrong, just because he didn't have 20 points tonight does not mean he wasn't outstanding. 70% from the field with 16 points is exactly what I'm asking for with Nikola Vucevic. I don't expect 20, 25, 30 points tonight from Vucevic because we do have a lot of scoring options on this team at this point in time for Vucevic to be going and doing that on a regular basis. But 16 points, 70%. That's great. That's a terrific game from Nikola Vucevic. 15 rebounds were strong as well. Again, when you have Miles Turner and Sabonis on the glass as well, trying to steal your rebounds, getting 15 rebounds over both of those players is fantastic to see. And in the third, in the second half, he wasn't necessarily a scorer. He was more of a facilitator. And the reason why is when you have Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikola Vucevic all playing well, there's going to be other players on this team that are wide open. Vucevic is a great team player, probably the best that we have at the moment. So when he gets the ball, he's able to look look around the court. Obviously, there's people pressuring him because, again, you don't want to leave Vucevic open now. He's made shots. He's made sure that you understand it's going to be hard for him to stop, to stop if you do make him shoot the ball. So they push up. They push up on Levine. They push up on DeRozan. You have two easy passes to Javante Green. Javante Green gets a lot of points in this game because of that. Vucevic was fantastic, and he changed the game for us in many ways. When he wasn't scoring, he was facilitating. When he wasn't facilitating, he was scoring. On the defensive end, two steals, two blocks. What more can you ask for from your big man, ladies and gentlemen? It's a fantastic game. One of the best of the season, I'd say. And I'm really looking forward to his next one. Hopefully, he can carry that momentum over. Zach Levine, ladies and gentlemen, 32 points, four rebounds, five assists, one steal, and one block. 12 from 18 from the field, 5 from 9 from the three-point line. This is a great welcome back game from Zach Levine to get 32 points in, and 5 assists in 33 minutes. Shows the impact that he made on the game in total. I thought in terms of the fourth quarter, DeMar took over in the early stages when Zach Levine was off. And Zach Levine carried the load when DeMar DeRozan was off. And he also carried the load to finish the game for us, to seal the game for us. It's great to have two options in the fourth quarter that you can turn to for some easy scoring options as well not to mention that we do have a lot of players on this team that can help in that area as well the only issue i have with zach levine in today's game the turnovers were very unforced in this game there were a lot of sloppy turnovers a lot of turnovers when the ball just falls out of his hands or he's dribbling too much and he's not doing the right things that's when we see the worst from zach levine and that is something that he does need to clean up and i think that's the next step in his progression if we can see this level of zach levine without the three turnovers that are really unforced, then he's a little, he's taking another step to becoming an elite player and one of the best players on the team, if not the best player on the team, which he probably already is at this point, which is fantastic to see. Obviously, that's the only criticism I have for Zach Levine. I thought his shot selection for the most part was fine. He did end up making some tough shots in today's game, but he's a shot taker and he's a shot maker, and we need those shots at the end of the day, especially with Lonzo Ball out. There's not much facilitating that you could put. It's a lot of half court set it's a lot of slow plays and that's when Levine DeRose and Vucevic have to step up for the team Javante Green 13 points four rebounds and one assist man was all over the place in today's game he was flying in for dunks getting a lot of foul calls as well making things happen on the floor he had a big game and Vucevic helped him out in that area as well I thought Vucevic was probably the best team player in today's game and Javante Green was a big beneficiary for Nikola Vucevic and the way that he played. 13 points is something that's great to see for Javante Green as well. Again, when he's getting the four assist mark, when he's getting 13 points as well in certain in different games, he's making an impact in different ways. And he's not just a passenger on the court when you have the starting lineup that you do today. He makes an impact defensively and he makes sure that he gets his opportunities, whether it's playmaking or scoring wise. That's all you can ask for from a player that's technically your fifth option on the team. So it's great to see in relation for the Chicago Bulls. Moving into the bench, ladies and gentlemen, we got Ayo Dosumu who had six points, two rebounds and one block in today's game good return game from Io, i should say three from four from the field i love his floater and i think that's a good developing part of his game that honestly the floater game once you get that going once you add that as a trademark in your arsenal for a player it's very hard to stop a floater because at the end of the day you're shooting it over the big man you're shooting it over defenders and it's very hard to block it's very hard to just say i'm gonna take this floater and i'm gonna deter it a floater is a very good asset to 
have. It's one that I think many players on this team should learn how to do. And Io seems to be getting there in a nutshell. And that's great to see. And all, the bulk of his boy, points did come from floaters. So I really love that part of uh, his game. I like the fact that he went for a posterizer or a Miles Turner. Again, shows that fearless attitude that he has. But nevertheless, it's a good game from Io. I wouldn't say it's a great game, but it's a good game. And that's, um, that's something that... That's all we can ask for in the, at the end of the day. Troy Brown Jr., five points, two rebounds, two assists, two from five from the field today. Uh, he made a good three-point shot, and again, that's when Troy Brown Jr. is the most effective. I thought his shot selection was very poor today. There is one instance where he tried to pass to the corner to Kobe White. Obviously, that wasn't the move to go with because there was clearly a defender on Kobe White, so he straight away to turn to take a shot. A couple of shots in the paint that just were not necessary, and that's the only thing I could really say. Those three shots that he missed, again, there's not many shots for him in this this game but those three shots that he missed were not great shot selection and that's something that we need to build up with Troy Brown Jr. That's always been a theme with him. He seems to have a lot of potential, a lot of upside. He's definitely someone that can fit the system, run out and transition, has nice assist play to him. It's just the shot selection that needs to be uh, cleaned up with Troy Brown Jr. Then he could be a great role player for the team. Moving into Matt Thomas, he had five points, three rebounds, two assists, one from three from the field, um, one from two from the three-point line. This is an okay game from Matt Thomas. Again, I don't expect much from him being the 15th man on the rotation. He is coming in for players that like Devon Dotson and Mac McClung. Uh, those were the only uh, guards that did not play in today's game that probably could have had a shout. He did okay. He did fine. That's all I could really say. He made a good three-point shot to cause a timeout for the Pacers. And that's that's about it. We know his specialty. We know what he can do. He's a very hard worker. But he might not be the best option. He might be the best option. The Bulls decided to go with him today. And I thought he was all right. Last but not least, Tyler Cook, four points, five rebounds, and one block in today's game. Had a nice poster in the fourth quarter as well. Very athletic, as we all know. He's someone that is able to take it to the rim. He had a lot of uh, time at the center position today. Sabonis did take advantage of him for the most part. But again, this is a situation where we miss Tony Bradley. Tyler Cook had to step in and play backup center minutes. And he did okay. He did an okay job. He didn't miss from the field or anything like that. He played within, he played within himself. But... With Tony Bradley in this team, I think we might win by a little bit more because you stop the size advantage, you stop the post-ups of Sabonis, at least to the point in which he took. Miles Turner doesn't probably get a lot of time where he's has mismatches because, again, Miles Turner, in terms of when Sabonis was out, did have a lot more mismatches as well. He took it into the post against a lot of our opposition. If Tony Bradley was on Miles Turner today, when Sabonis is out, those mismatches don't happen. You maybe stop a potential threat in the post and in the paint. I really do think we miss Tony Bradley, but nevertheless, you can't always have the things that you want. We still won the game, and Tyler Cook played a good part in it. Looking at the must improve, I think I'm going to give it to Kobe White today. Again, I really enjoyed his defensive awareness and his defensive presence. I thought for the most part he was fine defensively. But as a point guard, as someone that's going to have the ball in his hands for the majority of the game, 33 minutes and one assist I think needs to be a lot better of a job done. That's all I can say on this situation. That's the only reason he's in the must improve. I think his shot selection was a bit poor in terms of the three-point line and taking step back threes. That's not something we always need to see. But he did get to the foul line, shot two from two from the foul line today. He, he is someone that, at the end of the day, did play a little bit aggressive, got to the paint. A lot of his points were in the paint today. So that's all I could really say on the situation with Kobe White. But as a point guard, you have to be more of a facilitator. Almost everybody in the starting lineup got more assists than Kobe White. So that is something that he does need to work on. And the player of the game for me is going to be Zach Levine. I thought he had a tremendous fourth quarter. I thought he ended up having a really good solid game overall. He took things personally against Karis LeVert. Made some big shots, some big threes. Big fourth quarter for him as well. And Vucevic is definitely a candidate for this as well, in my opinion. I thought Vucevic was outstanding. I thought Levine was outstanding. And again, in the fourth quarter, you usually turn to DeMar DeRozan. When things were not necessarily going for DeMar DeRozan, you turn to Zach Levine. And Zach Levine is right there to help you out and ended up having a great game, in my opinion. He is the player of the game for me. 
The Bulls record is 20 and 10. We officially have double the amount of wins compared to losses, ladies and gentlemen, which is a big step in the right direction. It's great to see that even though we have one of the most um, delayed games in the NBA, postponed games in the NBA at this point in time, we remain second in the Eastern Conference. We're still fighting for the top spot. We're still fighting with a lot of competitors trying to take our spot and we are hanging in there and we are winning games that we're supposed to win. Any stretch of the means, a game against the Indiana Pacers at home is a game that we should be winning and I'm very happy that the Bulls did end up winning a very strong game and extending our winning streak to three. Our next game lies in a back-to-back -back away from home now. We go and travel to Atlanta to face the Atlanta Hawks. Now I do want to say keep in mind and be very aware this game has potential of not playing because from my understanding the Atlanta Hawks have 10 players in health and safety protocols at the moment that we speak so there is a lot of opportunity there for that game to get postponed and just because I'm going to show that I'm not biased towards the Chicago Bulls I'm going to say it now and it's going to be remain true this game should not be played I'm going to say it from the very beginning with 10 players out in health and safety protocols with the Atlanta to Hawks, there is clearly an outbreak happening for their team. Same with the Raptors, and obviously now same with the Hawks. It was the same with the Bulls. This game should not be played. I'm going to say it now just so I don't be seen as biased towards the next game if it does happen. I strongly believe this game should be postponed, but we'll wait and see what the NBA decides to do with that. It's a tough decision to make, and I'm sure the Bulls are still going to travel, but we'll wait and see what happens. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Hopefully, we can go out and beat the Atlanta Hawks regardless of their situation if we do play this game, but again, that's my standing on the situation. Have a wonderful and safe day, Bulls Nation. Bulls Nation. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care.